Okay, um, now it is time before we actually start doing some math here, just to go over a few basic things, um, such as how we actually are going to be defining everything in this class. Okay, so first of all, we'll start with velocity, the velocity vector. That is going to be denoted as v bar, and that is equal to lowercase u in the i hat direction plus v in the j. Whoop, wrong wrong way, j hat direction, plus w in the k hat direction. That one's pretty self-explanatory. You've probably used it in many physics classes. That's nothing new. Um, the second one we have are forces. That is denoted as f hat. And it is written as uppercase x in the i hat direction, plus uppercase y in the j hat direction plus z in the k hat direction. Once again that looks pretty familiar. Um, other names for these right here, this x right here is also known as the axial force. This y right here is has a bunch of names actually. We can call it the side, the side force or the lateral force or the transverse force. all the names are appropriate and they all work. And then finally we have this Z right here that is known as the normal force. Okay, next we have the moments. And then this is where it gets a little messed up. We're probably in the next five, ten minutes going to use up most of the letters in the alphabet. So moments or torques, another name for it, is given as T bar. T bar is equal to L in the I hat direction plus M in the J hat direction plus N in the K hat direction. Okay, like forces, this is known as the axial, the axial moment. Abbreviate, abbreviate that. This M right here is known as the longitudinal moment. And then finally, just like the Z for the forces, this is known as the normal moment. Okay, after that we have angular velocity, that's another important. So we have another important parameter, that's angular, uh, spelt that wrong. angular velocity will be noted as omega bar. That is equal to, we'll use some more weird letters, it's P in the I hat direction plus Q in the J hat direction, what comes after Q? R plus R in the K hat direction. These have different names other than these axial and longitudinal. This P right here is known as the roll rate. This Q right here is known as the pitch rate. And then finally we have the R that is known as the yaw rate. And then in just a minute we're going to go over the attitude which will actually depend on these guys as well or have the similar names to it. Okay, so, like I said, here's the attitude. That's the next one. How the hell do I spell that? There we go. Attitude, or it's also called the orientation. Okay, so, for them, just quick draw a bunch of airplanes here. So we have an airplane drawn to the side. Let me try to make not a dumb looking... Oh, that looks dumb. Okay, let's... This is looking a little better. There we go. So here's the wing. I'll draw it right here. Okay, so here's the center of mass of the plane. And then this axis right here. That is our x-axis in the earth frame. 
And then right here we have our x-axis in the body frame. This angle right here is known as the pitch angle. It's called theta. So theta is the pitch angle. Draw another airplane because we have to draw three of them for to show you what all these angles look like. We'll draw it from an above view. So let's try to draw this airplane right here. We'll have rectangular wings. Uh, it'll work. Okay, so we have this axis right here. The X is the X body frame, and then the Y axis in the body frame is right here. And then we have this frame right here. This is the X in the Earth frame. This angle right here is known as the yaw rate. That's denoted as this guy right here. Oh, I should write that right there. So we have now to find the yaw rate. Or yaw, yaw angle. And then our final picture. Do it over here. Draw a plane coming straight at us. Actually, we'll draw it like there. Then we have our wings like this. Pretend that everything's rotated. We have our axis right here, the Earth axis of what is considered parallel with the Earth. Or, yeah. So the Earth will be like down here, and then this axis right there is parallel with this guy. Oh. We have our Earth down here, and then this guy is parallel with those guys. So then we have this angle right here. This angle right here is known as the roll angle. It's denoted here. So this guy is the roll angle. Okay, so the final two things we need to define are what's called the angle of attack that is denoted as alpha that's a messed up looking alpha there we go and then the other one is called the side slip angle that is denoted as beta so the angle of attack might be kind of you kind of might have an idea of what it is but the side slip angle might be a little questionable um, so I'll just kind of show you what it is um, in picture form so let's say we have this box right here just kidding it's a cube is that a good looking? Yeah, it looks alright. So we have this cube. Our airplane, let's just denote, it's right here in this corner. And let's say we have a velocity going down to this bottom corner right here. So, we have our, let's denote this one, our x velocity is little u. And our y velocity, oh, not y, v. And then our, bot, our downward velocity will be w. That guy goes right down there. Okay, so let's take our velocity vector, this is it right here, this is our velocity, and we're going to project it onto this axis right here. So we're going to project it right over here. I'll uh, make this a little bit more clear, I'll just, I'll draw this, this face right here, I'm just going to draw it again in a 2D form. So we have our U velocity in our X direction, and then we have our downward velocity, noted as W. And then our projected velocity of this guy right here is projected right here. This is our V, projected V. So this angle right here, that's also this angle right here, that is called our angle of attack. In this case, it is going downwards. Okay, so how, how exactly do we find out what our angle of attack is? Well, that is given, our angle of attack is given as the arc tangent so tangent to the negative one or the inverse tangent of our w over u velocity. That will give us this value right there. As you can see, it's just simple trigonometry right there. That'll be our opposite over adjacent, because that's also noted as w. Okay, and then the next one is called the side slip angle. The side slip angle is the angle. Well, if we had zero angle of attack, 
and we had our velocity going this way right here, it would be this angle denoted with, it would just be the angle that goes from, I'll just draw it somewhere else. So we have another box right there, move that up. Our airplane is here and it's going in this direction. This is from a top view. This angle right here is beta. If this is our U speed and this is our, what letter is that? It's V. That is our side slip angle right there. That is the angle between these two guys. If that guy is zero, it will just be simply this. Otherwise, beta is defined as, oh, beta is defined as the arc sine, uh, negative one, of this guy right here, the velocity, V, over this guy, which is the absolute value of this guy right there. Not absolute value, it's equal to the magnitude of that guy. That'll give you this angle for any given angle of attack. If it's zero, it'll just be this guy right there. And that's a lot more, it's a lot simpler case. And so those are pretty much everything. Oh, there's, wait, no, there's one more I forgot to mention. The other one, is noted as the flight path angle. That I'll just show you by drawing another or trying to draw another airplane. So let's see, go up. Oh, this is not a good looking airplane. Okay, pretend that's an airplane. So we got our wing, we got that guy. This is right here. This will be our body axis in the Z direction. And then we have this axis, that's our X in or X in the Earth direction, Earth frame. And then we have our X in the body direction. So we have this angle right here. That right there is denoted as our pitch. And then let's say this is our velocity right here. This is our velocity that we're actually going because it's possible for a plane to be pitched up and not go straight. So this right here is noted as our angle of attack. The angle of attack is the difference between the body frame and the velocity vector. So that leaves this guy right here. Whatever this angle is, this angle right here, we'll call that gamma. Gamma is known as the flight path angle. So gamma equals flight path angle. Okay, so therefore we can write this other relationship. We have theta is equal to alpha plus gamma. This is assuming no side slip, however. Okay, so you might hear a term called level flying, or flying level, flying straight, something like that, something along those lines. So level flight Level flight means that this gamma right there is equal to zero. So that implies that theta equals alpha. That's all that means. And then with that being said, I think that is everything I have right now. Next time we will actually do some math and derivations. So thank you.